his stuff up. And then he turned to the cashier lady and said, whatever this lady got, I put it on my tab. I'm paying for it too. I ain't telling you no lie. I ain't making it up. You know what? We, can, we ought to clap about it, but it's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that gives you that calm assurance to know that God is in control. You can't dream that stuff up by yourself. Everybody call you a liar. And you can't do it without faith in God, Brother Robbie. You don't know, you don't know that a total stranger is fixing to buy all your kids' school clothes. Unless the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. I remember. It's the Holy Ghost. The point is, is the baptism of the Holy Ghost does everything. It does everything it's advertised to do. Maybe it's time that we get another dose of the Holy Ghost before we start looking here, there, and yonder and start looking on the internet, start looking on Facebook, find out what's wrong with us. I remember Mama telling me down at the, and it's the truth because I did it myself, down at the clinic that she used to work at in the waiting room, they had two posters up. One of them was hypoglycemic and one of them was hyperglycemic. Let me tell you something. Every human being walking the face of the earth had some of them symptoms. She told me they had to take them down out of the waiting room because it was getting everybody tore up because everybody that came in there read it on there and they all decided they was diabetic. Well, come on now. But I'm having to convince people. I'm having to argue and fuss with people that the Holy Ghost is good for them. That they got to have it. If we would ever get convinced of what the Holy Ghost really does and what the Holy Ghost really is, and if we'll keep having faith in God, let me tell you something, it's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful day when we have to drag all of our chairs out in the parking lot so we can all gather around and listen to the word of God being preached because we... Oh, I'm, i got a preaching spirit on me on Wednesday night and that, that's a wrong thing to do. Half of y'all worked hard all day and couldn't even know if you was going to be here tonight. The book says you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. You know what brings that, Brother Terry? It's the Holy Ghost. It ain't my glowing head. It ain't your pocketbook. It ain't your good name. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen what it says. Let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Remember that old song? We probably ought to sing it. As a matter of fact, I forgot to talk to Amanda about that. I was going to tell her, I don't want to learn no more new songs. I want to go back a while and get them so that they're so old everybody thinks they're new. Listen. I went to a meeting one night. My heart wasn't right, but something got a hold of me. It was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost. It got in my hands. It got in my feet. Praise God, it got a hold of me. Well, I went to a meeting one night, and my heart, it wasn't right, but something, something, something got a hold It's the Holy Ghost. Look what it does. Look what the Bible says it does. And I can testify. I thought on the way to church tonight. I can testify. Yes, it does. It does that. And it does that. And it does that. And there are times in my life when I was going through so much hell, I didn't know which way was up or which way was down. And you know what? I realized everything was all right when I came through it. When I was standing on the other side and I realized the Holy Ghost kept me. Oh, I feel Jesus in the house tonight. I have lived the footprints in the sand, Brother Terry. I have lived it. How did I get here? I'm going to tell you how I got here. The Holy Ghost carried me. Look what the Lord has done. 
He healed my body. He touched my mind. And he saved me. And he did it just in time. And you know why? I'm going to praise him. You say, well, the Holy Ghost ain't done all that for me. What happened to your faith? Same faith caused you to get it. It's the same faith that keeps you going the next day. Keeps you going the next day. Everyone who receives the Holy Ghost does so by faith. Pure faith has no exceptions, no restrictions. Matter of fact, pure faith is kind of like Mary was in Cana of Galilee. When she turned to the servants and said, Whatever he tells you. Say, well, I don't know about that. I don't know about You know what? I'm fixing to bust a bubble on you right now. There are some things I just ain't sure about. But you know what I found out? His way works. His way works. And you come through some of the things that I come through. You get some of the awards that I've got to, for making it through the junk that I thought was going to kill me. You don't care how you got there, Brother David. You don't care what you had to do to get there. I just know that the hand of the Lord was on my life. It was the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost in this very church. When my daddy's lying a corpse up there in the casket uh, and I showed up with the heaviest heart I've ever had in the world, uh, tears pouring, it's the worst thing I've ever had to deal with in my life. And you know what, Sister Michelle, I hope it's the worst thing I ever have to deal with from now on. Uh, but we showed up with our heart broken uh, and the next thing you know, the choir bust out to singing uh, how many want to hear him say welcome and the whole church is on their feet uh, and the power of God is moving. People are talking in tongues, dancing and shouting. I'm telling you, it's the Holy Ghost, Brother Terry. You got to be half crazy to go nuts at a funeral or else you have the Holy Ghost. Whatever he says unto you, do it. I'm going to go step further. We got to get that spirit on us in our worship. There's a song about that too. I may not can sing real good, but I know the words. Well, I started toward the altar. I had a hunger in my soul. I cared not what anybody would say because the Spirit made me go. I just lifted my hands toward heaven and I let God have his way. And praise the Lord, he filled me in that Pentecostal way. And then what's it say? It's real. Huh? I testify to you that it's real. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. It's real. Let me tell you something, Jamie. You've been a, such an inspiration to me over the last few months. Every time I start feeling down, every time I start feeling discouraged, I just look at your face like I saw it coming up out of the water in that baptistry. And you know what I found out, Brother Pete? It's real. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. So thank you. I'm believing that from now on, everybody we baptize come up with the Holy Ghost. I remember when Courtney got baptized. She'd have got the Holy Ghost in the baptism. She would have beat you to it if she hadn't got scared. And then she started just bawling, tears pouring down her face. It's the Holy Ghost that does that to you. It's the Holy Ghost. When you feel free, it ain't, a, it ain't something you can cook up. You just can't all of a sudden imagine that stuff gone. You can't think yourself into a place like you get when the Spirit of God gets on you. All right, let's talk about talking in tongues. I like it. You say, man, you kind of being, no, I, I ain't being carnal about it. But I will if you want me to. I like it. I love to be able to get out of me and get in Jesus. I love it. In the beginning, on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, 1 through 4, says that they all, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, spoke in other tongues. Peter then preached the message of salvation, culminating with the truth that was the promise. The truth that the promise was to every person. When the Gentiles received the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter number 10, 
The importance of that wasn't lost on the Jews who were present because Sister Leanne, it validated the Gentiles' experience as the same one that the Jews had received. In Acts 19, Paul happens upon some disciple of John the Baptist who hadn't even heard about the Holy Ghost yet. When he told them about Jesus, reminding them of the message that John preached, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. Then he laid hands on them and they spoke in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the saints at Corinth spoke in tongues. And Isaiah, in fact, prophesied it in Isaiah 28 and 11. What did he say? With stammering lips and another tongue will I speak unto this people. He said, this is the rest. I thought about that this, this evening as we were struggling a little bit through song service. I thought about that. I read something in a book today, yesterday. People have to shovel all kinds of pills down them to go to sleep at night when the answer is in the Word of God. This is the rest wherewith you cause the weary to rest. In Mark's Gospel, chapter number 16, one of the signs that would follow believers is that they would speak with new tongues. And then Jesus declared that everyone that born is born of the Spirit is just like the wind. That it would be accompanied by a sound and you would see the effects. The goal is not, do not come up here and ask God, let me talk in tongues. It, with one exception. The Bible does give us the Bible does give us permission to ask God for the gift of tongues and interpretation. The Bible says covet earnestly the best gifts. It says if you give a message in tongues, which I think is where you were going, pray that you may interpret. The Bible gives, that's the only time. But when you want to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you just have faith in God. You don't come down here and pray to talk in tongues. Pray to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We should never, ever, 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 ever gauge someone's spirituality nor put an overemphasis on people that speak in tongues. Don't think just because you saw them speak in tongues that everything's all copacetic with them. Say, well, I thought that. No, 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 don't think it at all. As a matter of fact, Paul said, I would rather that you speak five words in your own tongue than 10,000 in an unknown tongue. I remember we had a guy come through here, a singing fella, and he talked in tongues more than he sang. Let me tell you something. Maybe it was just me being carnal that night. Maybe I had a bellyache or something. Maybe I had my mind on the cardinal game or something. I, that used to be the case. Let me tell you something. I was so carnal, I used to sneak out, go to the bathroom and get in the car and listen to the ball game until my daddy caught me. <laughs> then I wasn't even allowed to go out no more. We used, they used to do that kind of inhumane stuff back when I was a kid. Daddy went for a long time. We wasn't allowed to go out zero times. You need to go to the bathroom. You better go before church starts. Bless God. I don't know where that came from, but it's, it was the way it was. And you know something, Brother Pete? I made it through every service. Ain't that crazy how that works? However, we should by faith in the operation of the Holy Ghost and the knowledge that the Holy Ghost is not of this world. Readily accept and acknowledge the operation of the Holy Ghost in a surrendered and submitted life. Let me leave you with this. Why did God choose tongues? I got this from a tract authored by Brother Fred Kinsey. Does anybody remember the singing Kinsey's? Back Sister Nadine does years ago from Ohio. The reason, number one reason that God chose tongues is he's the boss. God is sovereign. We are his workmanship. He created the heaven and the earth and he created us. 
All things were created by him and for him. We were destined to die for our sins, and he redeemed us by his blood. So therefore, we belong to him. He is sovereign. Why the blood? Why the water? Why the Jews? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Bottom line, this is His plan. This is His design. This is what He said, and whatever He says, we better do it. As an external or outward evidence, there are many things that evidence the Spirit at work in someone's life. The fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, but these take time to grow. And they function differently and affect differently. In Acts 2, they heard those uneducated Galileans speak in a multitude of languages. Then Peter and the Jews heard Cornelius and his household speak with tongues, which leads us to the third thing. Speaking in tongues is uniform evidence. John 3 and 8 says, So is everyone that is born of spirit. The wind that blew into the upper room and the tongues of fire, Brother David, are never mentioned again in the Bible. But speaking in tongues are. In Acts 2 they did, Acts 10 they did, and Acts 19 they did. It is a sign that God is in complete control of our bodies. Because James chapter 3 tells us that the tongue is capable of defiling the whole body. It is a little member that does big things. It is a fire. It is a world of iniquity. It is set on fire of hell. It cannot be tamed. It is full of deadly poison. James illustrates the importance of the tongue by comparing it to the bit in a horse's mouth and the rudder of a ship, the small things that control the whole big body. The comparison is that whatever controls a person's tongue controls them. The tongue is the final stronghold to fall before we are in complete surrender to God. The fifth thing is, is our ability to speak is mankind's greatest form of expression. The ability to coordinate our thoughts and our tongue is unique to mankind. No other living being with the, maybe possibly the exception. You know we won't ever know if dolphins really are talking to one another, don't you? Because there ain't no human that speaks dolphinese. No other living being speaks to another expressing thought as man does. The tongue is the vehicle of expression for the spirit of a person. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In a manner of speaking, the complete surrender of ourselves to God, which culminates with us speaking in tongues, is the cry of a newborn baby. It is the victorious cry of the Spirit, having taken no control over the carnal man. And it is a declaration that the speaker will never be the same. It cannot be bought, it cannot be traded, nor acquired in a barter. It is the gift of God. Stand with me.